Strong leadership and coordination of stakeholders are two essential ingredients for an effective response to crises and disasters. Leadership and coordination pose a significant challenge to the tourism industry in managing crises and disasters. Why is this the case? Tourism involves many sectors, including many small operators and government agencies at local, regional and national levels. Involving all these organisations in a response to a crisis or disaster would be ineffective. This generates three key questions. One, why should stakeholders collaborate or work together in times of crisis? Two, who should lead and are central to crisis response? And three, how should an effective response be coordinated, considering the diversity of tourism stakeholders? Let's focus on our first question, why should stakeholders work together? Aren't they better off working alone? Our recent research on cyclone recovery in Queensland found four main motivations for tourism stakeholders to work together. First, to share information such as situation updates from experts and information from those with previous disaster experience. Second, to access financial support or share resources. Third, to build relationships and networks with important stakeholders who can access resources and knowledge. Relationships and trust were also found to be key recovery success factors. Finally, to reduce duplication and improve coordination with others so that recovery could be effective. The main role of tourism businesses is to assist the community with long-term recovery, especially in places dependent upon tourism where crisis had negatively impacted the economy. But the tourism industry can help emergency management agencies in the initial response phase. Tourism businesses can evacuate people from crisis locations through air, sea or road transportation. If evacuation is not possible, they can provide emergency accommodation for tourists and locals. They may even provide accommodation for media personnel covering the disaster or emergency workers. Our research on the Deepwater Horizon oil spill in the US found that after the crisis, hotels in some regions benefited from hosting the media and cleanup crew. Their revenue actually increased. If traditional accommodation is filled with media agencies and emergency workers, where can tourists go? A UQ colleague, Professor Sarah Donica, discusses the potential role of the local community and their willingness to help tourists after a disaster. We invited 995 Australian residents and 480 Australian tourists to imagine that a natural disaster, such as a cyclone, a flood or a bushfire, hits the area they live in or the tourist destination they are staying at. Most tourist accommodations in the area have been severely damaged. We then asked tourists if they would stay with residents. Between 45 and 51% would stay with a local in an immediate emergency stage, and between 36 and 44 percent during the recovery period of the destination. Higher prices reduce this percentage. We also asked residents if they would open their homes to displace tourists. At the immediate emergency stage, between 65 and 74 percent of residents would host displaced tourists. Earning more money increases this percentage. Residents' willingness to host tourists drops during the recovery stage to between 20 and 54 percent. Still, these results highlight the potential of activating residents to assist in disaster management. Next, who are the key stakeholders that tourism businesses should work with? Stakeholders can include other tourism businesses across sectors destination marketing agencies, or DMOs, and industry associations. But they can also include emergency management agencies and government. Collaboration is vital, not only within the tourism industry, but also with these other stakeholders. This is complex, but very important. Understanding influential stakeholders and their roles is a first step to coordinate and improve the management of tourism crises and disasters. Let's think about our second question. Who should lead and who should be central to any crisis or disaster response? The power interest matrix can help us identify key stakeholders and understand why they are important. The most important stakeholders can be identified based on their level of interest 
and power related to the crisis or disaster. Government is a key stakeholder who usually has both power and influence and has the resources, staff and technical expertise to cope with disasters and crises and may share these resources with the business community. They have a central role to play in coordinating recovery strategies. Tourism is one part of the business community. Its role is part of a larger industry and community response to crises and disasters. Tourism's involvement will depend on the importance of tourism to the local economy and the power and influence of tourism stakeholders. Tourism is best represented through industry associations and destination marketing organisations who are trusted and network with government. Business size, importance and the nature of the impact will determine the power and influence of tourism businesses. The range of tourism stakeholders can be challenging to coordinate, but coordination is vital to avoid duplication and to present a united voice to government. Peak tourism associations and DMOs play an important role bringing together the major tourism stakeholders. They can act as representatives between industry and government by coordinating and sharing information and providing advice to government on business recovery. We have answered why collaboration is important and who the main stakeholders and leaders are in crisis response, but how should an effective tourism response be coordinated? A set of systems should be in place before an incident. Establishing these before a crisis or disaster can improve coordination between stakeholders and speed up response activities. Systems can include command centres, protocols and communication networks. Regular communication is essential to any effective response. And plans should be updated based on new information. The tourism industry should be part of planning to help government and emergency authorities immediately after a major incident. Tourism can also play an important role in economic recovery when the time is right. Queensland in Australia has a long history of emergency and crisis management, and tourism is an important part of its economy. The following provides a case of how the Queensland tourism industry coordinated and responded to recent natural disasters. The tourism industry is critical because it is the tourism operators, very often the accommodation providers, the hotel, the motel, the transport operators, the airlines, the bus companies, the trains, the marine operators. It is them who have to deal with the people who are sometimes literally and metaphorically stranded and might find themselves unable to uh, progress on their journey, and unable to return home, uh, left without a booking for uh, additional hotel nights that they need. They may have such uh, trivial, or not trivial, but uh, mundane issues as not, not having access to their credit cards or payment facilities. It's all these practical problems that arise. And as you say, it's the tourism operators who then have to, in a, in a meaningful and effective way, deal with those concerns and deal with those people. So it is pretty important that the industry is involved at every stage of this process. And if we learn something along the, the journey of multiple disasters over the years, it's communication. Communication is at the heart of everything and that's both in anticipation sometimes of an event uh, like a cyclone that you see coming or, or a flood, uh, other events we don't necessarily see coming, uh, but the communication between all agencies and parties involved is critical and I think that's where Queensland has done a pretty good job over the years at continuously improving that system. So now if, if there is an impending or a potential disaster like a natural disaster, the state government would organise a, a, a comprehensive communication network, activate a, a network that's established now but can be activated at, uh, at very short notice and it and includes all the state, uh, state agencies that have to be uh, at the table. The disaster passes and the recovery uh, is in play. The same applies. Everybody needs to know what everybody else is doing so we don't trip over each other. Resources aren't wasted and uh, the support and the help can go to where it is most needed. You may want to inform everybody of what is going on next door and what other people are doing, but you need to focus, obviously, your engagement on uh, those uh, people who are either most in need 
are most likely to be able to contribute to a solution. There's a bit of self-selection going on, so you rely on the network or the network members to come to you and, and either offer or, or ask for specific support. But you have to be a bit tactical, especially in uh, intense times, to say, well, all right, in this case, we can't deal with uh, smaller issues in less affected areas. We have to go to where the greatest need is. And we have to also engage with uh, perhaps an airline, perhaps a transport company, a coach company, to move people about coordination and that uh, linkage is pretty important I think and everybody would recognize that because the networks are complicated and you know we have many sectors and many types of businesses and not everybody can has necessarily the time especially in a time of crisis to to listen to all the broadcast and information has, does not access to all the information so to have that link uh, to uh, to the rest of the the government networks say uh, is pretty important to the operators so I think we do fulfill a pretty important role in that regard from the general communication networks that we have, we have to provide operators, we have to provide operators with reminders every now and then saying, look, are you ready? What would you do next time something goes wrong? And are you, uh, are you set up? Do you know who you talk to when something goes wrong? We can help them like that. And for that reason, we have uh, a couple of years ago developed an app, a phone app, that uh, allows uh, operators to fill in the details and all the information that they may need in a disaster situation. And the way it is set up, and the app is called Ready, Set, Go, the way this app is set up is to, you can preload the important contacts, maybe your insurance contract, the, the important phone numbers, the agencies you may wish to contact, and reminders of anything else that may come in handy in a disaster. And you will have access to that information even if you have no phone connection. Leadership and coordination are two essential ingredients for effective crisis and disaster response. Stakeholders should collaborate for a range of reasons, such as information sharing, financial support, and reducing duplication of effort. Tourism needs to be able to coordinate the views of its diverse stakeholders and provide timely input into response and recovery strategies, which government lead. DMOs and tourism industry associations can play a leadership role for the industry as a whole. They can coordinate industry interests and work with government for effective tourism and overall community recovery.